ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله dear viewers brothers and sisters in islam السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته this is the third episode of the series Path to Salvation. In the previous two episodes, I furnished the reason why I decided to present this piece of work for you. And also, we got into the concept of the original sin, which is held by Christianity. Uh, which goes against the concept of the original forgiveness which is held by Islam. Basically, uh, we're talking about salvation here. We're talking about being cleansed from our sins, how we earn it in Islam, how it can be earned in Christianity. We're comparing between the two. But Indeed, in order to understand that end, we must go back to the beginning, at the beginning of history, the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa, our father and our mother, and what happened to them in the garden. The fact that they were commanded to dwell in this garden and they were also given the permission to eat from all the trees except one tree and in a way they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they ate from the tree from which they were not supposed to eat. As a result of this they became sinners. Now in Islam we teach that Adam and Eve repented they actually uh, felt the extreme once it comes to regretfulness, which is one of the pillars which is required in your tawbah. And nadam al tawbah, kama qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al tawbah hiya nadam. That when you regret uh, the wrongdoing uh, is, uh, in a way, uh, repentance. Add to this the fact that they confessed their sins. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ They said, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. We made a mistake, O oh Allah. We're sorry. We're, we're, we feel uh, we made a mistake. We committed a sin. And we're hoping in your forgiveness and in your mercy. And indeed, if it is not of both of those, the forgiveness and the mercy uh, are not bestowed upon us, we will be amongst the losers. As a result of this, uh, as a matter of fact, the Quran teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who taught them these words. As a result of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. But yet they have to come down to earth to uh, basically go through another test. Uh, so this is what we call in Islam the original forgiveness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, is a forgiving God, is a forgiving ilah. Now, once it came to Christianity, they teach something different. They teach that Adam and Eve committed the sin. So we agree there. But they never mention the fact that they regretted uh, their doing, the wrong uh, doing. Uh, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. They never did. And as a result of this, they actually passed on that sin to their offspring. And this is what is meant by the doctrine of the original sin. Listen. They believe that children come out of the womb of the mother uh, sinners, which really, in a way, it shows uh, unrealistic. Uh, that baby that comes out of the womb uh, is a sinner. 
um, I know this may hurt some of the feelings of some Christians, uh, but this is the reality. Uh, in a way, you're saying that baby who did not even say a word, uh, did not commit any of the acts, is a sinner because he inherited this from his ancestors. Uh, indeed, this is a, a wrong concept, and we say this with respect. We're just trying to clarify the facts. Look, Islam teaches us something different. Islam teaches us that كل مولود حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه والحديث في صحيح البخاري كل مولود يولد على الفطرة Every newborn is born on the fitra, which is Islam, uh, in, is born free from sins, and this child is not held accountable until the child reaches the age of puberty, which we call as jurists in Islam, sinu taklif. Now, also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned fi hadith, uh, which is fi sahih uh, Muslim uh, as well, Hadith Ayyad ibn Himar al Mujashi'i رضي الله عنه that I have created all my servants حنفاء إني خلقت عبادي كلهم حنفاء على التوحيد يعني they actually have توحيد they they believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى ثم جاءتهم الشياطين فاجتالتهم then Satan came and turned them away from that uh, state. Uh, of uh, uh, purity, uh, the state of Tawheed, the state of goodness, which they came into this world with it. So, uh, Islam refutes the concept of the original sin. Islam condones the concept or the doctrine of the original forgiveness, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was merciful, was also forgiving to our father and mother, uh, Adam and Eve, and he accepted their repentance. Now, Islam does not dismiss the fact that we become sinners in the course of our lives. As a matter of fact, you read verses in the Quran that talks about muttaqeen, muhsineen, and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they sin. Listen to this verse. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين I don't have to translate or give the meanings of these verses but very quickly Allah spoke about those people to be righteous and pious to be محسنين actually which is the highest level in the religion منزلة الإحسان المحسن هذا but at the same time look at the next verse والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم يا الله amazing they are محسنين they are متقين and yet possibly they commit a فاحشة والفاحشة في اللغة عند أهل التفسير الزنا ومقدماته أن فاحشة the word fahisha in the Quran or in the Sunnah, when the people explain it, it means adultery and what leads to adultery. Shuf, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described those people to be muttaqeen, righteous, pious, muhsineen, huh? which is the highest level, Islam, Iman, Ihsan, yet they may end up committing a fahisha, meaning adultery or the what leads to adultery. But look at the attribute here. والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكروا الله. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads them to ask for forgiveness. فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب إلا الله And who else can forgive sins but Allah? ولم يصروا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they do not insist on the sin. So here we do not have to believe that we inherited like Christians teach. We inherited the original sin. There is no need for that. Listen, we are sinners. كُلُّ بْنِ آدَمَ خَطَّى All the children of Adam are sinners. But the best of them are those who repent. 
وقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في صحيح مسلم حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه by the one whose hand my soul is والذي نفسي بيده لو لم تذنبوا if you do not sin لذهب الله بكم الله سبحانه وتعالى will sweep you will take you and will bring other people who sin again I want to warn the viewers this is not an invitation to sin هذا الحديث ليس بدعوة للذنب إنك تذنب no absolutely not it opens the gate of hope that if you are a sinner do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وهذا فحوى قول الله تعالى and this is what is meant by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم Till my servants, O Muhammad, who transgressed, who committed a lot of sins Subhanallah, servants of Allah who transgressed and yet Allah still called them servants of His يا عبادي قل يا عبادي My servants who transgressed Despair not from the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all sins So in Islam we do not condone the doctrine of original sin that we inherit, inherited the sins of our father Adam and Eve. Rather, we believe that we are sinners, but at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likewise, He forgiven our father and mother. He also forgives us uh, any time that we commit sins. Brothers and sisters in Islam, let's take a short break and we'll be right back with uh, another segment of the third episode, Path to Salvation. I leave you in the care of Allah. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're still at the dentist clinic. Dr. Ashraf is our host. Dr. Ashraf, uh, now you have the patient. And we've been talking about the sterilization and uh, the care for the tools, either the disposables and the non-disposables. And one of the very important, most advanced tools for the dentist is the microscope. And, and one of these things is very important that we can take this image and we can freeze it so that my patient can join me and discuss with me the different treating, treatment options that we, we have. Being exposed to burn is considered to be a catastrophe and some people would have the burn at home some others would be exposed to it in the streets and at work as a factory or other places and learning how to deal with the burn and how to uh, manage the case either uh, to take to be going to the doctor or just to manage it as an emergency and then going to uh, a specialized uh, person to deal with it is a mandatory for all of us. This is one of the most, most dangerous common, yes. causes of burn because I'm not only exposed to the heat, I'm exposed to smokes. These smokes may aid to the injury uh, uh, of the skin. for a way to recharge your hearts or to get you back on track in your obedience to Allah or maybe you're looking for a program to remind you of your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here on Living Hearts we'll be working together as a nation helping each other to remain firm in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Saturday live on Huda TV you will have a chance to learn your deen and at the same time Listen to real life stories that will make your heart shake. Every believer needs a place to turn. And inshallah, we can all turn to living hearts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Dear viewers, welcome back to Path to Salvation. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we're comparing the concept of salvation in Christianity with the concept that is held by Islam. Like I mentioned at the very beginning of the series, Christians hold the faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down in the body of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and he was crucified and killed for the sins of humanity. And all what you have to do is to believe in this formula. With this, you earn salvation. Now, in Islam, it's totally different you have to do certain things in order to earn your salvation. And before I go into refuting um, the issue or the uh, case of uh, crucifixion, which is for a Christian, by the way, is absurd, I understand, because the whole religion of Christianity is established uh, on the fact uh, that Isa alayhi salam, uh, Jesus was crucified. And I know for a Muslim to make that statement uh, you, as if you're stabbing the Christian in, in the guts, basically. Uh, that is why uh, I invite uh, my brothers and sisters in Islam who uh, present uh, this uh, issue to Christians uh, to do it in a kind and nice way. And I hope I'm uh, acting like one. I'm not just saying things that I'm not doing myself. I'm actually uh, calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bring about uh, that into my heart and also into my tongue uh, so that I would present these facts to Christians in a kind and nice way. Uh, like I said before the break, uh, the fact that they believe that someone who is sinful, which is Allah really, uh, coming down in a body of Isa alayhi salam, to be killed for the sins of humanity, uh, this in a way drove them uh, to change uh, something that was not even condoned by uh, the Jews, uh, in a way. The Jews do not believe in the original sin. They do not. Because the Old Testament clearly does not teach that. It's something that was introduced by Christians to justify the need for that formula. Uh, in Islam, we're a little bit different. We believe, listen, that we are sinners, but we are not. We were not born sinners. We uh, we are born clear, clean. Uh, we do not, uh, you know, have any um, affection uh, or any uh, basically thing that is inherited uh, by us uh, because of our ancestors. And this is actually but, uh, what was taught. أَمْ لَمْ يُنَبَّأْ بِمَا فِي صُحْفِ مُوسَى وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَفَّى أُخْرَى So these are the teachings of Musa alayhi salam, of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that you do not inherit the sin of someone else, in a way. Uh, and this is what Islam, so Islam really condones what has been taught from Adam until uh, basically Isa, because we, we believe that Isa never taught this in a way, but Christians made up that formula of the original sin, the doctrine of or the original sin, in order to justify the need for someone to be uh, killed, uh, to be crucified. Uh, and in a way also they started uh, using uh, textual evidence from the Old Testament uh, where, uh, for example, Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, was commanded to sacrifice one of his sons. They said, look, the atonement has been always blood from the beginning of time. Uh, they bring up the uh, story of the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, and uh, the fact that they had to offer a sacrifice and so forth. Listen, uh, sacrificing or blood is one of the acts of worship, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon the Muslims from Adam alayhi salam until us. We, every Eid, we offer a sacrifice, al-Qurbani or al It's an act of worship. Qul inna salati wa nusuki. Say, my salah, my prayer, 
ان ما ينسك نسك اللي هو اللي ساكريفايسنج ومحياي ان ماي لايف ان ماي ديث ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك امرت وانا اول المسلمين سو دير فيورز اي دونت تو جيت كونفيوز هير بيكوز وي ار جوينج سام وير وذ ذس وي ار توكين اباوت ذا اوريجينال سين ذا دوكترين اوف اوريجينال سين ويتش از هيلد باي كريستيانيتي وي كاونتر ذس ان اسلام باي ذا اوريجينال فورجيفنس ذات الله فورجيفز اول ذا سينز الله فورجيفز وي ار سينرز اند الله سبحانه وتعالى ويل فورجيف اول ذا سينز اف يو دو سيرتن ثينجز Now in Christianity, they said in order for you to uh, earn atonement or uh, to basically be cleansed from your sins, uh, you have to believe in the formula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down in the body of his son in the flesh in order to be crucified for your sins. Easy going. Now, for us as Muslims, what is the concept? What do you have to do to be cleansed from your sins? بإذن الله تعالى uh, I uh, based the whole thing on uh, a beautiful work uh, made by uh, شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية uh, طيب الله ترى he mentioned that there are 10 means 10 ways to get your sins expiated and إن شاء الله throughout the course of the series I will explain each one of them individually but let me sum them up quickly Because in the formula of the crucifixion with Christianity to cleanse yourself from your sins comes in 10 ways to expiate your sins in Islam. Four of them, four of the 10, were indeed uh, basically decreed upon us or imposed upon us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first of which is the afflictions and the calamities which we endure in this world. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is very important. Any calamity which befalls you in this world, it does expiate your sins. And remember, I will detail this, inshallah, throughout the course of the series. This is number one. But what if you died while you still have sins in your books? Then comes in the punishment in the grave. Being punished in the grave as a Muslim, it does actually expiate your sins. Uh, enduring some punishment in the grave, in a way, it does expiate your sins. But what if you rise from beneath the ground and you're still a sinner? You still have sins in your books. Then the anxiety and fear and certain punishments which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make uh, a Muslim endure in the day of reckoning, uh, will expiate the sins. Uh, the atmosphere, the environment of the day of resurrection is very uh, scary. Uh, Besides, there are certain people who will be punished until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, concludes uh, judgment in the day of resurrection. And what if you still have sins, then the hellfire for a while. But as long as you believed in La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and you fulfilled its conditions, not just said it. You see, La ilaha illallah, like they say, it's a key to Jannah. But the key must have teeth, ridges. And this is what Wahb ibn Munabbih said. If you have a key without teeth, it will not open Jannah. And we're going to shed light on the condition of La ilaha illallah. By the virtue of La ilaha illallah, which you fulfilled its conditions, you will be taken out of the hellfire and placed into Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, that we go to Jannah without reckoning and without punishment. But those are three. Calamity afflictions in this world. Two, punishment in the grave. Three, punishment in the day of resurrection. comes in number four, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive you without anything. Al-Hadith al-Najwa, Hadith ibn Umar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call upon his servant, you remember on this day you committed that sin, and you remember on that day you committed that sin, I veiled you in the dunya, and today I will forgive it for you. So those are four. Three now, you must do, asking for forgiveness, doing tawbah, doing righteous deeds those are seven 
and three are granted to you by others. The deeds which others uh, do for you, like your child making dua for you, uh, the believers making dua for you, or the intercession of the believers or the intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Those are ten means which insha'Allah I will detail each one of them individually throughout the course of the series. But like in Islam, you sin, but here is ten ways to get your sins taken care of. In Christianity, they say you sin, and the only way for your sins to be cleansed and uh, the only way for you to earn atonement is the belief in the formula of the crucifixion of Isa, uh, the so-called, of course, uh, crucifixion of Isa alayhi assalam. With this, brothers and sisters in Islam, we have concluded three episodes, which in a way, an introduction to the whole series. The next episode, inshallah, I will begin talking about the concept of salvation in Christianity. I will talk about the so-called crucifixion and the fact that uh, Isa alayhi salam cannot be divine, he cannot be Allah, and refute this in a very respectful way, inshallah, very kind way. We're just trying uh, to uh, clarify things uh, for people. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we believe that only Allah guides. Uh, our intention is not at all to hurt the feelings of anybody. Do not miss the next episode of Path to Salvation, where we will talk about the concept of salvation in Christianity and uh, the uh, view of Islam regarding it. Till then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.